calendar that you already have created, you wouldn't use this calendar function. We'd uh, go a, a, use a little more advanced feature called a uh, web viewer page, and I can explain that later. Tasks, uh, project tasks, and issue tracking. Those are all task lists. They just work in slightly different ways. Surveys, a survey is like a poll. If you want to have votes on a certain subject, you know, what's for lunch, or when should we have our company picnic, that would be how you do that. Lists, um, list is basically like a spreadsheet. You can just put a spreadsheet in SharePoint and have any kind of information you want there. Under pages, you know, you can uh, just simply add web pages inside parts of your SharePoint page. If, you're, if you are a web designer type person, this is what you'd use. And same with the web part page, um, built for uh, managing your own content manually. So I'm going to go back to our home page and we'll go into some of the basics of these web parts, how to manage them and how to work with them. You see the announcements here. Again, this is the default that we see once SharePoint's installed. And you can simply add anything to any web part, if you have permission that is, just by clicking the add item under that web part. And you see they all have them, the links, the calendar, the announcements. So we'll add an announcement and we'll give it a title, say we're going to you know, this being the title of our company intranet page, we're just going to say, welcome to our new intranet. You can put a body, which is just more explanation or more content. But the neat thing about announcements and a lot of other items in SharePoint is they have an expiration date. You click on this calendar link, and what you can do is choose when you want this content to go away from your site automatically. This is in one of the many ways that SharePoint just makes it easy to manage your content, not having to remember to go back and, oh, shoot, our, our company picnic was last week. We've got to remove that from our site. You know, you'd probably set these to expire the day they're happening or the day after they're happening. So, for example, I choose February 27th for our announcement, and I say, okay, you will see our announcement there. And it also shows you who put that content up there. Uh, in this case, we're logged in as administrator. Now, once the 27th rolls around, this is going to automatically disappear because we put an expiration on that. Now for users to view that content, they're going to see the information up here as you can see. If I put some information in the description field, they'll see a little bit of that here. If there's a lot there, they want to check the details, you simply click on that item and it goes into it. It'll show the body of it here. Again, these buttons up at the top, we see everything because we're logged in as administrator. Um, one, a couple items I want to mention here. You're going to see a familiar interface wherever you're at in SharePoint. You'll always have, if, again, permissions allowing, um, the ability to create new items right from here. If we wanted to edit this item, you know, we could um, update and our description, our expiration date, and so on. If you have permission to delete this item, you can do it from here. You can manage permissions um, on individual items. We'll talk uh, about more permission-related things in just a little bit. And alert me. Now, alert me is a very powerful tool in SharePoint. Um, what this does is you can create uh, email-based alerts that will come right to your inbox that will let you know when several things happen. And I'll show you what some of those conditions are. You can choose to be alerted if anything changes, you know, someone else changes, um, someone else just changes something specifically created by me or modified by me, or if there's been a change to the, uh, you know, say expiration or anything is added. You can choose to get these email alerts right away. Um, you can get one a day or one a week. And if you do a daily or weekly, you'll get all the different alerts that you subscribe to um, at that certain time that you set. Now, some real world things that these are good for is say you're, uh, you have a company meeting or you're having a company event that um, does get changed. It's Everybody's automatically notified. You don't need to worry about doing that. Uh, you can set alerts on procedures so your staff who you know have to worry about and use those procedures, when they know there's been a change to the procedure, they get an automatic uh, notification that the procedure's been modified. You know, pretty useful tool. It keeps a lot of the guesswork out of what's been changing in your, uh, in your site.
Okay, so back to our home page. I also want to point out that on the top right of each web part, again, if you have the web editor or owner permissions, you'll see a little down arrow. If I click on that down arrow, you can choose to minimize or close the section, which is going to, you know, minimize is going to hide everything in it, and close is going to take it off that front page. Modify shared web part. This is how you can uh, customize that content. Say, rather than having that say announcements, we want it to, to say, um, you don't know, say, for example, company news. Remembering that this is our company's homepage. So now this is company news. So the thing to grasp around is, well, I don't really want an announcements thing, or I don't want just a calendar. I want it to be specific. That's just a title for the object, and you can, we can make it whatever we need and whatever we see fit. So I'm going to go back into the, the modify section, show you some of the other capabilities that you can modify are. Some items have different views and some don't. You'll see that, for example, the announcement list we're in, the current view is only all items. You can change to a summary view. Um, summary view is actually just going to uh, take out some of the extra content that's below there since we've just got a a little quick test, there's nothing to change with summary. Appearance, you saw I did change the name. Also notice that you've got the ability to set the width and set the height if you so choose. Now SharePoint by default just makes everything automatically fit. You'll see uh, in a minute some items like calendars for example can get pretty big and wide and that'll push some of the content off to the side or way down to the bottom making it so you have to scroll around. So that is an example where you know you might resize things. Otherwise, about 90% of the time, it's going to be fine just leaving it as is and automatically work. You've got different layout options. You can center things. Um, from here, I can choose to move it to the right-hand column if I wanted. So I'll show you what that looks like. Again, it just moves my company news to the right side. You know. Can't stress enough that this is real, real easy to manage. You don't have to be any kind of a web web person at all to do this. I'll go under Site Actions and I'll choose Edit This Page just to show you there's another way to get where uh, we were. You can also move these things around by going into the Edit Mode. Once I move my cursor over the title, you see that it changes to a cross. And I can just simply drag and drop that into whatever order I want, making things real easy to... Uh, to lay out and organize. When you're done, you can simply click Exit Edit Mode, and your site's uh, been edited just that quickly. So I'm going to show you some of the other content and some of the different web parts, just to give you some ideas of, of what you can really do with this. Now, we've got this calendar item here, so I'm going to go into Edit Mode, because first of all, I don't like where my calendar's at. I want to have it below my company news. I want the news to be the first thing people see. And now we're going to choose edit and we're going to go back to the modified shared web part. I really don't just need a plain old calendar sitting out there. That's not really going to do anything for me. But um, what I might call this is um, company events calendar. Again, this is because this calendar is on our main site. It's not uh, restricted to any different department. So we might say that uh, we've got a company picnic coming up. And we're going to set the location of um, outside of the office for everybody who's got a, you know, the nice picnic table outside like, uh, like we're lobbying for here. Just like in Outlook, you can set a, uh, you know, durations, times, dates for your appointments. Since this is a quick thing, we're just going to set it um, for the 27th and and I will call it from 4 to 5 p.m. What you'll notice here is you do have a lot of the same options that you're used to seeing in appointments uh, in SharePoint as you do in Outlook. You can make this an all-day activity.